get money, boys. Hey, y'all already know what time it is. What you do, who you are, is what's on tape. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hold up. Woo! He's looking at the wrong receiver. He's looking at the wrong receiver. Less than a year ago, senior Armani Watts' season ended early with a leg injury. In the first game against UCLA, he lost his right-hand man in the secondary, Donovan Wilson. Uh, it was real disappointing, though. I, I felt his pain because I was hurt last year, so I, I knew exactly what he was going through and just you know you got to push through it. And, uh, but, I mean, you can see the drop-off. Uh, Donovan's a great playmaker. We got young guys now filling in, freshmen, uh, a lot of freshmen out there, uh, as everybody sees. But, they're getting better every week, and they're taking in what the coach saying. They're coming in early in the mornings, getting extra film, uh, doing every little thing they can to be able to be successful out there. A group of young players look to Watts for direction and leadership. His to-do list also includes making plays. He's handling all roles quite nicely. He's been one of the better players in our league, and uh, it's been with consistency this year, you know, and, and um, I think it jumps right off the tape and people notice it, but uh, you know, he, he has really, really uh, stepped his game up to another level this year. I, I think he's, you know, performing at the best, you know, he's been. Uh, I think he got named mid-season All-American uh, and to be able to do that with the youth that, you know, he has around, you know, him and uh, just being on a young defense in general and being able to guide those guys and communicate with them and make sure that they're all in the right position and you know they, they all feed off his, his energy and the plays that he makes on the field and it's fun to watch. I thought as soon as you did that I just took off, I was about to take off running because I thought you were going to do that. Because if you don't break it now, it's impossible. I got too deep when I tried to break that inside. I didn't have enough room to get around. Like you've been getting better each and every week and our coaches harp on it all the time. Just reset every week and just get better on those mistakes and don't make the same mistakes. It's well documented that when Armani Watts steps on the field, he undergoes transformation. He has a crazy thing. It's like when he crosses the line, it's a whole different person. I mean, the dude that you'll see in the locker room and walking around town or doing anything is a whole different animal. Because when he's on the field, he's an animal. So, I mean, he's just a different type of person. When he hits you, you feel it. Even when you're at practice or even when we thud it, you feel it. But overall, he's a good person. He's a nice guy. You know, Armani is a, really a, as hard as he plays and as violent as he is out there on the field, um, he's really Kind of a fun-loving big kid. Likes to joke around a little bit. Loves to dance. Uh, I think I can go to a whole different level. Yeah, when I go on the field. Uh, yeah, like you said, flip a switch. I don't feel I just turn into a different person like that. Uh, and off the field, I'm just pretty chill. Probably quiet at first. Could be funny though. <laughs> hey, I was talking about you. What you mean? Uh, on the camera. What camera? Oh, for the phones. Oh, uh, that's probably why they got me mic'd up. So what you think about him on the watch? I was just like, his character. So <laughs> 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 his character, he's a hell of a player. When he hits you, you feel it. <laughs> this is stupid. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is presented to you by AT&T, a proud sponsor of Texas A&M Athletics, entertainment your way. A&M is one of college football's high-end outfits, so you have to look the part. 
The program will change it up a bit with alternate uniforms for this weekend's Mississippi State game. The alternate that we'll wear this year against Mississippi State is sort of a, as far as the overall look, is something that we look at doing. Uh, we haven't done a maroon combination or a maroon based combination uh, since we started doing the alternate uniforms in 2012. So. Uh, when looking at 2017, uh, back 16, 18 months ago, uh, we were looking at doing one at home. Uh, again, trying to find something that we hadn't previously done without just completely recreating something that's been done in the previous seasons. The combination that we're actually wearing is something that Adidas presented us back in 2015 for a, uh, a different game. Uh, the look is something that nobody at Adidas had done before, which is the two-tone. Um, for us, the, the maroon with the black uh, uh, weave woven in the fabric of the pants and the jersey. Uh, no other Adidas team had done that to this point. Um, and so we just we passed on it in 2015, but again, when revisiting uh, for 2017 and, and looking at the all maroon or maroon based combination, and that's where we revisited this one. Well, these, these uniforms, the alternates and the throwbacks, are really. You know, Adidas comes to us with different designs really a year in advance. Uh, so there's sometimes a year and a half, and, and there's uh, tweaking, there's some outrageous looking ones, there's some things that, uh, you know, that are, uh, you wouldn't believe actually, but that's, that's their, that's, you know, that's their job. And then we kind of hone it down into, you know, what we think is, is good for us, what our players will like, what our, our fans will respect, what our, um, you know, what, what will give us a little juice, a little energy, and, and from where we are and who we are, um, yes, we'd like the alternate uniform, but we also want it to be reflective of, of, of who we are, and uh, uh, I'm not saying it's, it's you know, not, not to be outrageous, but we've had some great designs, I think, over the years, particularly with our helmet scheme uh, that, that come into play. And, and I know that, uh, I know the players like it, I know the recruits like it too. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is presented to you by Pepsi. Official soft drink of Texas A&M Athletics. Okay, great effort, right? Great effort. Great effort out of everybody. We assume that. We know we do that. We know who we are. Okay, the key tonight is execution. Execution. Do your job. Do your job. Don't take anything more than that. You do your job and go to the next play. It's like we talked about yesterday. Things go good, go to the next play. If something bad happens, go to the next play. Stay together. Let's go win us a football game. Let's start fast tonight, huh? Let's start fast tonight. Who's going to start the fight? Who's going to be the spark? Who's going to make the first play? Like I said earlier in the week, it's time to play four quarters. Yeah. Four quarters, all game long. Dominic, to the first, look to the left. Competition is at its peak in the SEC West. It's A&M and Mississippi State on this Saturday night. The Aggies start on a high, defensive takeaway. A snap a little bit low, quick slant, incomplete, and intercepted off the carom at the 42. The Aggies come up with it. Alaka was right there with the reception off the crazy bounce. Hey, 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 hey. But they can't capitalize. The big play slips through their fingers. On ready to pass under heat. They take another shot through the head. Of Rantley. The Bulldogs end up in the game's first score. 
from the 13. Fitzgerald gives out of the backfield, makes the catch. A little pressure off the edge. Delivers a strike at the 40-yard line. Complete again to Jesse Jackson. Little option. Fitzgerald. Touchdown, Bulldogs. After settling in, the defense is dug in for much of the first half. Williams runs it into the boundary. Upended. Went airborne involuntarily. Sent there by Charles Oliver. Fitzgerald going to try and run it with nowhere to go. Stopped at the 30 by Kingsley Kiki. Fitzgerald downfield and incomplete at the 40-yard line. That time looking for Jesse Jackson. Let's go. I'm unstoppable. They come after it. Looks like they might have gotten a piece. They brought a lot of heat against Logan Cook. The Aggies are looking to generate offense. Connection isn't there. Mond almost and is intercepted by McLaurin. Mark McLaurin on the tip drill. Fitzgerald on the keeper. And he's got the wheels going. Fitzgerald all the way down to the 10-yard line. He pulls it out on the slam. Touchdown! Donald Gray with the catch. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is presented to you by Memorial Herman, Advancing Health. Starting the second half with the ball provided an opportunity to gain momentum. Instead, things went in the opposite direction. Back to pass in a small window complete to Green. Nothing but Green in front of him. And brought down from behind at the 25-yard line. You have first down, Mississippi State. Fitzgerald takes a handoff, throwing, going in zone. It's going to be defensive pass interference on Texas A&M. It was an incomplete ball. It was intended for Reggie Todd. And defensively with Charles Oliver, and no doubt that he did interfere. Fitzgerald at the 15 makes the snap, makes a handoff, looks into the end zone, and wide open, and a touchdown. Nobody close to Jordan Thomas. What I mean, what an Aggie within 10 yards of him. There was drop coverage there. They just marked six plays and 73 yards. In recent contests, AM was able to make adjustments and put together strong second half. They'd need to continue the trend. Bond going to throw. Bond is looking. Bond throw. And it is a completion. That's caught at the Bulldog 41, and that's Cameron Buckley. That's as right a spot as we've had in the entire game. Bond keeps it. Still on his feet. Inside the 20. Bond, first and goal, Aggies. Momentum. Suddenly things have started to turn. Let's see what we do here on this third down and goal. And it will go to Ford, and he got it. Touchdown! He was pushing, and he was pushing that to the backside up north, and he fell across the goal line. Finally able to seize the momentum, the defense forced a three and out. The Aggie offense was asked to keep it rolling. Mond inspiring some confidence, but dropped and picked off again. Durr, LaShard Durr with the interception, and he takes it back to the 33. In and out of the hands of Ratley for the second critical time tonight. And just like that, what looked like momentum is lost, Durr gets this ball. Mississippi State is back in business again. It had not gone according to plan. For pound matters, Kellen Mond took a fourth quarter shot and exited the game. Nick Starkle was back from an early season injury, called upon late in this one. Third down, five. Starkle sets his pocket, throws, intercepted, and they're going to go the distance with this one unless Ratley can catch him. And it will be returned, and that is a touchdown. Going to right now say it was about 83 yards to make it a 34 to 7 game. 
Half back to the right. Starkle takes the snap. Drops back to the 21. Stepping up. Looking. Going long. And that is a catch. And he's carrying a tackler with him. And he's fighting for the end zone. And he got in. And that's Buckley. 70 yards. He had a man draped on his back. He had another guy closing. And it was a tug of war. And Buckley will win it. Two teams entered Kyle looking to move to the upper echelon of the SEC. Mississippi State gets there, a quality win. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is presented to you by ASCO, your place for case construction equipment in Texas. Now get here, get here tight. Now look at me. All right, nobody's happy. I get it, all right? Nobody's proud of tonight. And it's up to us and it's up to you what we're going to do with it. Hey, we got to move on. But we got to acknowledge what happened tonight. You hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, some things we got to fix. We got to fix as coaches. We got to fix as players. It starts with me. We didn't do it tonight. And we'll fix that. I'll fix that. Right? We will fix it. Just like we fix things from the beginning, we can fix this. All right? if we acknowledge it and then move on and fix it. You hear me? Sorry. And not let it linger past Monday. <coughs> You've had one learning experience just like this, okay? That was a long time, seems like a long time ago. Right? But now we're back to it. You gotta decide what you wanna do. If you're just gonna accept it, right? If you're just gonna accept it, or if you're gonna do something about it from here on out. Anytime you lose at home, it's it's crushing. It hurts, and, and uh, you know it's something we definitely don't take for granted. But I can guarantee you, we're going to fix what needs to be fixed. We're going to come back. We're going to evaluate the film, and, and uh, really uh, really have a good week of practice next week. And we're going to fix what needs to be fixed. You know, it's a tough loss. Mississippi State played good. Uh, you, you know, we just got things we got to fix on both sides of the ball. You know, that's pretty much the bottom line. You know, we got to go in Monday, see what we did. Uh, see what we did good, see what we did bad, and just come back next week. We got a game at 11 a.m. Auburn's gonna be here, so that'll be our focus come Monday. You know, our, our team came out and, and I thought was ready to play because of um, because of how our defense handled it. You know, with the turnover early in the first possession, we missed a couple touchdown passes, and and then things kind of went downhill from there. You know, what these guys have done a good job of is is really focusing week to week. And, you know, we've got to eliminate some of the things that, that happened, uh, mistakes from last week. Um, we've got to be able to, to uh, improve.